topic for today that I have chosen is amenorrhea. It is an important high yield topic from Gynae. The kind of questions that you usually get from this topic are clinical. They give you a few symptoms or uh, they provide you with the karyotyping of the patient and the presentation of the patient and ask you to either diagnose or the treatment of the condition. So you must be uh, knowing all the differential diagnosis under primary amenorrhea and you need to know some tips and tricks to exclude the condition and finally get to the answer. So here I am to help you learn about amenorrhea and also to answer the questions easily. So after this topic also you need to solve few questions from amenorrhea and you need to consolidate the topic further. So let's get started now. Amenorrhea is defined as absence of menses. Amenorrhea is again of two types like primary and secondary. Primary amenorrhea is a condition in which the patient have never had menses in her entire lifetime. Whereas secondary is a condition in which patient have had regular cycles previously, but now the patient is complaining of absence of cycle after a gap. So primary is absence of menstruation by the age of 15 years, irrespective of secondary sexual characteristics or absence of menses and secondary sexual characteristics by 13 years. So if the definition is involving absence of secondary sexual characteristics, then the criteria decreases to 13 years. If it is irrespective of secondary sexual characteristics, then it is 15 years. Coming to secondary amenorrhea, absence of menses for greater than or equal to 6 months or the length of 3 cycles after the establishment of regular menses cycles is called as secondary amenorrhea. So this is regarding the basic concept of amenorrhea, that is absence of menstruation. Like while learning about the, uh, this topic, let us also understand few terminologies that are important. Uh, like hypomenorrhea, menorrhagia, oligo, poly and menometrorrhagia. So here I have written them in a tabular format for you. You can either take a screenshot or I'll try to provide uh, the PDF of this entire session in my telegram channel. The link to which uh, is provided in the description below. So coming to hypomenorrhea, the cycles are regular here and the duration or the interval between the two cycles is also normal. But the problem here is with the amount of bleeding during the menstruation which is less than the normal menstruating female. Whereas menorrhagia is an exactly opposite term of hypomenorrhea where the bleeding is excessive. And here you need to know the value of excessive bleeding that is greater than 80 ml of blood or greater than 7 days duration. So sometimes they might ask you, uh, these uh, numerical oligomenorrhea the cycles are irregular infrequent and the interval between two cycles is greater than 35 days whereas the amount of bleeding here is normal in polymenorrhea which is otherwise called as epimenorrhea like concentrate here polymenorrhea is another term is epimenorrhea we usually uh, don't read this anywhere so polymenorrhea is otherwise called as epimenorrhea here also the cycles are irregular same like oligo but the duration here differs that is less than 21 days and the bleeding is normal so when we comment on hypo and menorrhagia it is about amount of bleeding whereas oligo and poly it is about duration the interval between two cycles and now there is another term uh, which is mix and match between uh, the above two terms which is menometrorrhagia meno means excessive bleeding and metro means uh, irregularly that means it occurs between the normal cycles infrequent bleeding between the normal cycles that is menometrorrhagia so these are a few important terminologies you need to know in this topic now let us get into the actual topic proper which is approach to primary amenorrhea so here is how it goes like approach to primary amenorrhea I have uh, like written it in a tabular for, uh, flow chart so now let me try to explain this to you. Approach to primary amenorrhea. First you need to look for the mention of secondary sexual characters in the question. Like if the patient is having secondary sexual or if it is uh, if he or she is not having the characteristics. So these, uh, this sheet explains you only half of the flowchart where the secondary sexual characteristics are present. So if they are present, then look for uterus. If the uterus is also present, then you need to narrow it down to three differential diagnosis which is imperforate hymen, transverse vaginal septum and vaginal atresia. So yeah, if the uterus is present and the patient is uh, presenting to you with tense bluish mass and uh, imperforate hymen that is uh, there is a bulge and the cuff impulse is also present then it is imperforate hymen. 
if bulge is absent and puff pimples is also absent then it is transverse vaginal septum or it might be vaginal atresia also so you can narrow it down to these three differential diagnoses once the uterus is present and secondary sexual characters are present now coming to the conditions where uterus is absent so when uterus is absent you need to look for karyotyping if it is 46 xx or xy if it is xx then it is mullerian agenesis mrkh mayer rokitonsky kuster hauser syndrome or if it is xy then it is androgen insensitivity syndrome in both of the conditions breast might be normal but coming to axillary and pubic hair in mullerian agenesis axillary and pubic hair are normal whereas in ais they are underdeveloped or not developed in mullerian agenesis ovaries might be present Whereas in AIS, testes might be present, but they might show cryptorchidism, that is abdominal testes may be present. So you need to know the difference between Mullerian agenesis and AIS in detail. That's why I have uh, uh, written them in a tabular format. So once go through this. Coming to the treatment of Mullerian agenesis, it is mechanovaginoplasty. Whereas if uh, we talk about AIS, it is gonadectomy and estrogen therapy. So in this entire flowchart, uh, AIS is the most important one. So I thought of explaining about AIS in detail, like further detail. So coming to AIS, androgen insensitivity syndrome. It is otherwise called as testicular feminizing syndrome. It is having a karyotype of 46XY, that is a male patient with female characteristics, right? So testicular feminizing syndrome. So a male patient with female characteristics. So the pathology behind AIS is androgen receptor defect. That is, the patient is having testosterone receptor defect. So, testosterone cannot act on its receptor. So, the male features, that is, virilization decreases. So, the patient presents with under virilization. Whereas, the testosterone, since it is not able to act on its own receptors, it gets accumulated and gets aromatized to estrogen, converted to estrogen. And this estrogen finally acts on the breast tissue, leading to enlargement of the breast, which is called gynecomastia. So, totally like at the end the patient with AIS presents with underdeveloped or absent scrotum and penis with absent axillary and pubic hair and ovaries and uterus is also absent but the patient might present with gynecomastia that is breast enlargement so ax axillary and pubic hair is absent in AIS whereas axillary pubic hair is present in Mullerian agenesis that we have learned previously in the previous shade so now coming to uh, AIS types so you need to know about the types of AIS. It is of three types. Riefenstein syndrome, incomplete and complete. Riefenstein is exactly similar to AIS, which is a milder form that you need to remember. That is a male patient presents with undervirilized and gynecomastia. Whereas incomplete and partial AIS, the clincher point here is clitoromegaly. So you need to remember about clitoromegaly here. In complete AIS, the patient cannot have biological check. So these are the important points regarding AIS. Till now, we have learned about the conditions where uterus is present and secondary sexual characteristics are present. Now let us go to other half of the flowchart where secondary sexual characteristics are absent. So yeah, when secondary sexual characteristics are absent, then look for height of the patient. So when you look for the height of the patient, if the patient is short, then go for Turner syndrome. In Turner syndrome, pregnancy is contraindicated usually. When the height of the patient is normal, then you, you need to do hormonal study. If both LH and FSH hormones are increased, then narrow it down to pure gonadal dysgenesis or Swire syndrome. So how to differentiate between these two conditions? We have to do karyotyping. 46 XX is pure gonadal dysgenesis, whereas XY is Swire syndrome. So you have Y in Swires and XY. So remember it like that. Swire syndrome is 46 XY. Whereas, if both LH and FSH are decreased, then it is called Kalman syndrome. Kalman syndrome, as all of us know, is defect in hypothalamic pituitary axis. So, the patient presents with color blindness, anosmia, and short fourth metacarpal. In Kalman syndrome, the treatment that you need to give is pulsatile GnRH. Whereas, for Swire syndrome, it is gonadectomy plus vaginoplasty. And pure gonadal dystonesis, it is combination of estrogen and progesterone. Since the gonads are dysfunctional here, you need to provide external hormones, estrogen plus progesterone. So, this is regarding the other half of the flowchart, where secondary sexual characteristics are absent. You need to go for height and then karyotyping, hormonal study and so on. So, 
so now uh, let us discuss about few conditions where the hormone hormonal study comes out to be normal like fsh is normal but the testosterone increased then consider ovarian tumor if dhea hormone is increased then consider adrenal tumor if testosterone and dhea both are increased then pcos condition uh, need to be considered so i think uh, this is all you need to know about primary amenorrhea this helped me a lot to solve many questions from this topic so try to solve few questions after this video and uh, add any important points that you find in the explanations given below thank you